Hello and welcome to The Old Flyers. Orville and Wilbur Wright were the first to demonstrate controlled flight in a heavier-than-air machine. They were granted four patents to protect their intellectual property. These protected their innovative aircraft designs and control mechanisms. The patents the Wright brothers were granted were these. Granting a patent provides the patent holder with exclusive rights to an invention for a certain period of time, typically 20 years, in a jurisdiction. No one else can commercially exploit the patented invention. Patents enable revenues through sale, licensing and enforcements of legal rights. By disclosing their inventions, inventors are protected from competition and the public record prevents others from claiming the same invention. It is claimed that the Wright brothers' patents stifled aviation innovation through their litigious use of the courts to sue would-be competitors. The Wrights squandered their talents and energies and those people they sued in legal wrangling, especially between 1909 and 1917. Famously, they sued Glenn Curtis, a motorcycle maker turned airplane designer who became one of the Wrights fiercest competitors. Fitting his aircraft with movable flaps called ailerons instead of a wing warping mechanism, Curtis hoped to steer clear of the Wright's patent. But while the financial results of the patent war were mixed, its impact on the state of American aviation was indisputably negative. Even before Wilbur's death in 1912, during a period of intense litigation, the Wrights had sorely neglected research and development, so much so that by 1915, when Orville sold the company, their aircraft were derided as dangerous and obsolete. The American aircraft industry as a whole was stunted by the litigation. In fact, by the time the United States ended World War I in 1917, the state of domestic aviation was so dismal that the US government could not find a single American aircraft fit for military service. Thus, the country where the invention of powered flight took place would take to Europe's war-torn skies in foreign-made craft. Franklin Delano Roosevelt, then serving as Assistant Secretary of the Navy, decided to take action by convincing intellectual property holders to form a patent pool that would allow airplane makers to use one another's technologies for a modest fee. In doing so, Roosevelt effectively brought the patent war to a long overdue conclusion. Some countries where the recognition of the Wright Brothers' US patents face challenges or disputes include Germany. Their aviation community initially questioned the Wright Brothers' claims and patents. It wasn't until after World War I that the Wright Brothers' patents were granted recognition there. The United Kingdom. The Wright Brothers' patents were also met with scepticism here. Russia. The Wright Brothers' patents weren't recognised. Russia had their own aviation developments and pioneers. Brazil. There were challenges to the recognition of the Wright Brothers' patents in Brazil, and some Brazilian aviators were inspired by the work while also seeking to develop their own aviation technology. Italy. The Italian aviation community had its own inventors and developments, and the recognition of the Wright Brothers' patents faced resistance initially. While the legal battles and licensing issues may have had some stifling effects, they also helped establish a framework for intellectual property protection in the aviation industry and provided a foundation upon which subsequent innovations could be built. Over time, aviation innovation continued to progress as other inventors and organisations developed new technologies and designs, building upon the principles established by the Wright brothers and working within the boundaries of patent law. As a result, 
aviation has advanced significantly since the early days of flight, leading to the modern aircraft we have today. Thank you for watching. To encourage new content, hit the like and subscribe button.